It was a big night and day after for Rick Santorum. He swept the latest round of Republican presidential nominating tests and in so doing altered the complexion of the race. Conservatism is alive and well in Missouri and Minnesota. The former Pennsylvania senator scored decisive victories in both those states, plus a five-point win in Colorado, outgunning frontrunner Mitt Romney in all three of Tuesday's contests. I don't stand here to claim to be the conservative alternative to Mitt Romney. I stand here to be the conservative alternative to Barack Obama. Santorum won with minimal turnout, less than 6% of the voting age population in Missouri, and in Colorado and Minnesota, less than 2%. Still, his trifecta dealt a blow to Romney's inevitability argument, days after he scored big wins in both Florida and Nevada. The former Massachusetts governor addressed his supporters last night in Denver. This was a good night. For Rick Santorum, I want to congratulate Senator Santorum. Wish him the very best. We'll keep on campaigning down the road, but I expect to become our nominee with your help. The Romney campaign tried to play down Tuesday's bad news in a memo released in advance by political director Rich Beeson. There is no way for any nominee to win first place in every single contest, Beeson wrote. But unlike the other candidates, our campaign has the resources and organization to keep winning over the long run. Tuesday's results could only help Santorum's underfinance campaign. He said today he raised a quarter of a million dollars overnight. Texas Congressman Ron Paul finished second in Minnesota, third in Missouri, and last in Colorado. He spoke last night in his strongest state. Believe it or not, we did very well tonight and have a very, very strong second place, and it's going to continue. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich finished far back in both Colorado and Minnesota, and he wasn't even on the ballot in Missouri. At an Ohio factory today, he ignored the results as he talked up manufacturing. You cannot be the arsenal of democracy if you don't have an arsenal. So we very badly need to rebuild our manufacturing base so that we are competitive. Because no delegates were officially awarded last night, Romney is still won the most so far. But an Associated Press analysis based on last night's margins of victory concludes that while Romney remains ahead with 107 delegates, Santorum is now in second place with 69, ahead of Gingrich and Paul. Those delegates would be officially allocated at upcoming party conventions and caucuses. More than 1,100 are needed to clinch the national nomination. News Hour political editor Christina Bellantoni is here with more on what's next after Santorum's surprising trifecta. Christina, given these three outcomes from last night, which one did you find the most surprising? Colorado was definitely the most surprising. Missouri, which I'm sure we can talk about, was less of a formal contest. Not very many turn people turned out. Minnesota was going to be a little tighter. But Colorado, Mitt Romney was favored here. There weren't very many polls coming into the, the caucuses. They were mostly done by public policy polling a left-leaning pollster, but Romney was favored by 10, 12 points in a lot of these polls, and some fairly recently so, with Santorum winning by five points. As you can see on our map, uh, Romney was able to win the western, you know, northwestern part of the state, which is close to Utah, where he has a, a strength, but he was not able to really deliver. Another big surprising thing of the night, this uh, green portion here is the one county where Newt Gingrich mm. actually won in all three of the states, and I think that that's a surprising result as well because this was something where everybody looked at him as perhaps coming in second place and he didn't even really show up. But given the low turnout, which we've saw, uh, how much of this was a Romney loss and how much of it a Santorum win? Yeah, I think that Santorum's folks look at it as a big win for them. In part, they've been able to raise a lot of money off of this. They're able to sort of capture on the momentum and the, the media attention to him in a way that when you just, you won Iowa and you didn't even find out you won Iowa for two weeks, he didn't get that national attention that he's getting today. So that's a win for them. But it really does suggest a lot about a lack of enthusiasm for Mitt Romney. He wasn't able to get his people out. Turnout was low in all three of these states. The people that turned out were people that 
didn't necessarily like him or like his ideals. Let's walk through the other two states. In Minnesota, what did we see happening there? Well, Minnesota, and this is a caucus state, and it's an area where uh, you can't always predict what's going to happen there. There's a lot of different political dynamics in Minnesota, you know, on both the Republican and Democratic side. But this is an area where you had two candidates who were actually from Minnesota running for president uh, before they actually dropped out, Tim Pawlenty, the former governor there, and then Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. Both kicking themselves today. <laughs> exactly. And Tim Pawlenty had worked very hard for Mitt Romney. He campaigned for Romney in Minnesota. Bachman has not endorsed anyone, so who knows if that made any difference. But Rick Santorum was able to really deliver here. Now, it is very important to note that the turnout was down in all three of these states. Uh, it was down 7 percent from 2008 in Colorado in the same contest, 23 percent from Minnesota in the same contest. And Missouri, just half of the people turned out this time that turned out in 2008. Let's talk about Missouri. Is Missouri a, potent, a particularly conservative state among, in Republican circles? Uh, yes. Missouri Missouri is very conservative. A lot of evangelicals live there. It's the home of uh, Rush Limbaugh, where he grew up. And it's also an area where you've seen it was a battleground state. It's slipped away from Democrats in recent years. You know, the presidential contest, the Obama campaign isn't really considering contesting it. And Rick Santorum had some key endorsements there. Uh, Phyllis Schlafly, who's not a name we really think about all that much these days, um, sort of an icon of the um, you know, early female uh, movement on con the conservative side. You know, she was a big endorser for him. Him. She had been with Bachman before. He was able to really drive home some of these key groups, and he did a lot of events with evangelicals. And is it too soon to say that Santorum has replaced Newt Gingrich, who, as we pointed out, wasn't really on the map in any of these three states, as kind of the anti Romney? It might be too soon, but one indicator of this is what the Romney campaign is doing. You're seeing them go full out against Rick Santorum with press releases. You haven't heard them really talk that much about Newt Gingrich. So the question is, do they put anti-Santorum ads on television ahead of these contests that are going to be February 28th in Arizona and Michigan, and then uh, Super Tuesday, March 6th? And Santorum, if he's able to put some money on the air as well, if he's raising all this much money, that could be very interesting. I know you will be watching, Christina Bellantoni. Thanks a lot. Thanks. John Braybender, a senior strategist to Senator Santorum's presidential campaign, joins us now from Pittsburgh. John Braybender, thank you for joining us. Congratulations. Thank you for me. And congratulations to your candidate. I do want to ask you, though, yes, uh, the senator won in three states, but with such low turnout, we just heard 2%. Uh, six percent. How much of an accomplishment was this? Well, I think it matters a lot because it's the people who are paying most attention in the Republican Party right now. And each state had its own symbolism, if you will. Missouri was particularly interesting to me because exactly why you said there, Newt Gingrich was not on the ballot. It's the one state where Rick Santorum had a clear shot with Mitt Romney. So it was the moderate versus conservative pure battle. And Rick Santorum won that state by 30 points. And then you go to a state like Minnesota, which was expected to be tight, and Mitt Romney only got about 17, 18 percent of the vote. That means 82 percent of the people voted for somebody other than who was the supposed front runner, runner. So I think that there was a lot that said there's been eight states so far, and Rick Santorum is one half of them. Well, speaking of Governor Romney, he was out on the trail today saying, yes, congratulations to Senator Santorum. But he says, in effect, we didn't really compete head to head. He said, we didn't really compete in the states of Colorado uh, and Minnesota. He said, when we do, we can beat him. Yeah, well, I thought it was also interesting that, as you mentioned, they put out a press release yesterday saying they're still the best candidate because they're the best funded campaign. And, and I guess they're going to print up bumper stickers that say Newt Gingrich for president because we have more money than anyone else. I mean, the truth of the matter is I feel that these are, are excuses. And, and frankly, I think you even have to wonder if these aren't slightly insulting to the states that did hold uh, their primaries and caucuses yesterday that now after the fact he's saying that those states really didn't matter to him. You also know, John Braybender, that uh, Mitt Romney's coming after Senator Santorum, saying that when he was in the Senate, uh, the, the debt ceiling was raised, I think he says, five or six or seven times. And he talks about federal spending shooting up when Senator Santorum was in the Senate. He says what this country needs is somebody who wasn't part of Washington back then. Well, it's interesting because two things. We're talking about Mitt Romney, who gave us basically Romney care became Obamacare. We're talking about Mitt Romney, who supported the Wall Street bailouts, which is deeply offensive to all Tea Party supporters. And the interesting about Senator Santorum, when they say about insider-outsider, he actually was an insider in the sense that he was in Washington, 
but he acted like an outsider. He was part of the Gang of Seven that closed the scandal-ridden House Bank and House Post Office. He even got away with little perks for senators like uh, taxpayer-funded meals and taxpayer-funded haircuts. And he's also the one who reformed welfare, taking millions from welfare to work and also getting rid of all the abuse. So if, if Governor Romney wants to go match for match as far as who has had a bigger impact on fiscal sanity being brought to Washington and being brought to uh, this campaign trail, we, we sort of welcome that. The image many people have of Senator Santorum is that he appeals mainly to social conservatives in the Republican Party. Where are those voters going to be in the contests that come up in late February in, in Michigan and Arizona, the Super Tuesday states in early March? Are there enough of those voters for him to continue with the kind of success that he had last night? Well, first of all, I, I think you got to be a little careful here. Does do those groups appeal? Uh, does the senator appeal to those groups? Absolutely, because he's been consistent on those issues. Unlike Mitt Romney, who's been all over the map on, on, for example, the life issue, Rick Santorum has been consistent on those issues, so they do appeal to him. However, I do believe his blue-collar roots coming from Pennsylvania, his manufacturing plan to bring back manufacturing jobs from China, his fiscal responsibility, all those things mean a broader group of people who are supporting Senator. I mean, think about this. Rick Santorum won every single county in Missouri last night against Romney. You cannot do that unless you are getting groups from the Tea Party, from the social conservatives, and mainstream Republicans. And Rick Santorum appeals, I believe, across that full spectrum. The other comment, John Brabender, we're hearing today from the, just this afternoon from the Romney camp is that they are the one campaign with the money and the resources to go the distance. Now, we know that you were raising money overnight. I gather there was a 20-minute hold uh, at your campaign office from people who wanted to, to donate. How much money have you raised and how much of a problem is it just to keep at it? Look, I will, I will acknowledge right now that if the campaign simply comes down to who can run the largest number of attack ads, that we should just quit all the primaries right now and, and declare uh, Mitt Romney the, the winner. However, the fact that Rick Santorum has won half of the state so far, spending just a fraction of the amount that Mitt Romney has spent, says to me that people care a heck of a lot more about the message and the messenger and their record than how many ads they're going to run on TV. You're in Pittsburgh. That is, of course, the area where Senator Santorum grow, grew up. Are we to assume that you're shooting commercials there to air for his campaign now? Well, I, I was here. Uh, I also am a native uh, of Pennsylvania, and I was here doing some things. Rick, Rick, unfortunately, is not here in Pennsylvania today. He's in uh, Texas and then on to Oklahoma. But uh, th this is, Pennsylvania is very much a big part of the hub of the Santorum campaign, and, and many things relative to the campaign are produced here. And many of our volunteers and supporters and staff uh, come from Pennsylvania, and, and uh, uh, we're, we're very thrilled the fact that come April, we're also going to have a primary here. Shooting a commercial? Uh, I, I was here shooting a commercial today, but I'm not telling you any more than that. <laughs> okay. Well, finally, if Iowa had gotten the results right in the first place, how much difference do you think that would have made? You know, I, I'm sure it would have made some, but that's looking back. All I know is that last night there were three primaries and caucuses in this country, and Rick Santorum won all three. And the strange thing about presidential primaries and, and this process is there's no time to look back or even any time to stop and enjoy what just happened. You have to look forward and you have to deal with the cards that you are dealt. And what we believe right now is we have the momentum, the excitement's there. These weren't small victories. We won by big margins. We're seeing the contributions coming into ricksantorum.com going through the roof. It, as you said, there was a long delay today because we had to add more servers. And so I'll tell you what, we're, we're pretty excited about where we are. And I think there's a lot of people in this country who, for the first time in these primaries, are very excited about a candidate. John Brabender, senior strategist to Rick Santorum, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.